Ah, this is Brooklyn. St. Michael with the School of Aquaponics and this is Ask the Aquaponics God. Preventing you from becoming a biscuit-headed grower. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna be talking about where to test certain water quality parameters in your aquaponic system. I got a question from a viewer and that's exactly what he wants to know. So we're gonna jump right into his question and um, see what he's over here yapping about. Any of you guys have questions, comments, leave them um, in the comment section below and then I'll make sure to check check them out and then see which ones um, you know we can feature on the show. So let's jump right into it. Um, this question comes from Brian Hale. What's going on, Brian? It says, where do you recommend that you test each of these different things? For example, is it better to test O2 in the fish tank, pH in the sump, or does it really matter? Now this is a fire question, Brian. Fire question. This is something that people should be wanting to know. Where should I test certain quality, uh, water quality parameters? And he's asking, does it even really matter? So the answer to that is, it's kind of a yes and a no, and I'll explain to you right now. You know, when you test um, the, the, the required water quality parameters, which, you know, pH, um, you know, you have your water temperature, dissolved oxygen, ammonia, nitrite, nitrate, you know, alkalinity, water hardness, iron, you know, in your carbon dioxide, when you run those tests, you know, what you'll find when you test them in the, you know, in various components, you'll find out that for the most part, a lot of those are going to have subtle differences, small little subtle differences, some more than others, and some are going to have significant differences. About one of the fish jumped out. Some of them are going to have significant differences. So it is going to matter on some of them where you test it and um, uh, others not so much. So I'll give a rundown on where I test certain uh, water quality parameters um, in this aquaponic system. So like I said, there's gonna be subtle differences. Now, when we're dealing with um, you know, uh, parameters such as ammonia and uh, nitrite and carbon dioxide, those are more so gonna be pertaining to the fish. Those are gonna you know, have a direct link or a direct effect on the fish opposed to having you know uh, some type of effect on the um the plants so what i like to do is i like to run my test in the fish tank when it comes to those water quality parameters but on a ner under ner normal circumstances you might run a you know you might run an ammonia or a nitrite test in your fish tank and you come down here and run it in your um you know your floating raft and you might get the same readings depending on the test kit that you use. If you're using like an API test kit, like I got here, you know, the, the, you know, the increments that they measure them by, you know, they're, you know, 0 0.25, you know, it's not, you know, it's kind of a large increment. So in actuality, there are gonna be differences between the fish tank and um, the floating raft. The fish, they produce ammonia. The, you know, the plants in the raft, they take up ammonia. But when you run your test, a lot of times you're gonna see the same thing. So it might not register on here. So it's gonna look, you know, it's gonna look like they have the same exact, you know, ammonia concentration. But like I said, there's subtle differences. One of them is removing them, removing ammonia, the other one is um is uh, um, taking them up. So you have to keep that in mind. Carbon dioxide is the same way. Carbon dioxide is being produced, you know, in the fish tank. So it's gonna have a slightly different you know, um, reading when you take your carbon dioxide reading. I take a carbon dioxide reading from the fish tank and I've taken it, you know, from the, um, the floating raft and there are subtle differences. But just, you know, for closure, I like to take those readings in the fish tank because we, like I said, you know, high ammonia and high nitrite and high carbon dioxide concentrations, those are gonna be affecting the fish more so. Now, when it comes to taking you know, like a, um, a water quality parameter test from the floating raft, that's when I like to get into, you know, iron. Iron, we know that that's an essential nutrient for plants. That's a, mi uh, a, a micronutrient. So it's required for the plant. Now, if I, you could take your, um, your, your test, your iron test in the raft, and you could take it in the, um, in the fish tank, and you are gonna see a noticeable difference, right? That is gonna register, especially using like the HANA test kit that I have. You're gonna see the difference. Like I, I've taken it before, you might get 
2.75 in the fish tank and you come over here and test it in the raft you might get 2.32 you know, 2.23 you know it's going to be a difference and there, obviously there's going to be other factors that play a role in this the water flow rate you know that I have coming in here that's going to affect the amount of iron that's being um, uh, taken up also the plants that are in here the amount of plants the plant density less plants are going to take up less iron so it might not show up you know as significant of a difference more plants you know it's going to have more of a um an effect on the difference between where i take that measurement from so for closure i like to take that you know where it's required and where it's needed which is right here in the raft you know nitrate that's another one nitrate is also it's a macronutrient right so that's going to be dealing with um the plants they're gonna use that as a nitrogen source. So I'm gonna to wanna to test my, nitri uh, my nitrate levels right here in the raft. Although you, you, you could test it in you know, various components, especially on the API test kit. You know, you'll read, sometimes you'll get readings between, you can't tell if it's between 40 and 80 parts per million. You know, you can't really tell when you run it. It all kind of looks similar. But just for closure, I like to test it, go ahead and test it right here in the raft, just to get my, you know, get a little bit of closure on it, just to, just to know what it's doing in the in the area that it's needed. So also I'll test EC, that was another one. I don't know if I mentioned that in the beginning, but that's another one that's required. EC, the electrical conductivity, that's showing you the concentration of your nutrients um, in the solution. And I'm gonna wanna test that in the raft. I do test in both just to be nosy, but you know, uh, it's gonna have more of a significant um, meaning if I test it here in the raft. I wanna wanna see what it's like what is the concentration of nutrients in this particular area because that's directly affecting the plants right so i'm gonna go ahead and test it right there and take my reading now when it comes to alkalinity water hardness ph water temperature i'm gonna go ahead and take that you know in the sump tank and get a uh, an amalgamation pretty much of the um you know those parameters in the the raft and in the tank it's gonna give me an amalgamation, a mixture, and it's gonna let me know what's the co a combination of those two, and just give me, you know, you know that that number as a whole, and I'm fine with that. I can I, I can accept that. Although there's gonna be subtle differences if you measure them differently, subtle, you know, slight differences, but I can accept that. Now, when it comes to dissolved oxygen, I will test those in both. That's the one I require for you to test in both components, right? All these um, uh, organisms, they're all going to be taking up dissolved oxygen rapidly. The fish, they're taking that thing up like crazy, right? And depending on the stocking density. So this is also going to be um, dependent on, you know, your fish stocking density and also the plant stocking density. You got more fish in there, they're going to be taking up more rapidly. You know, but it's not going to be the same. That's what I want you to understand. It's not going to be the same depending on your, you know, your, um, the, the amount of fish you have in there and the amount of plants you have in there. It's still not gonna be the same. The more plants I have stocked in here, you know, the faster they're gonna be taking up oxygen. I can run a test here, my dissolved oxygen, and I can run a test in the fish tank, and I'll run a test in the sump tank, and they're all gonna be, they're all gonna have different um, results. But you do wanna make sure you test each one of those in their, you know, individual components, because it's that important. Each one, of their, each one of these components are gonna have a certain requirement, you know, in order for the plants, in order for the fish to thrive. And you're gonna make, wanna make sure that you maintain that, you know, in, your, um, in those components. So with that being said, that's how I pretty much test and um, run my test around here. I like to, you know, keep them, some of them separate. I'm particular about some of them. Some of them I'm not. You know, I'm okay with testing it in the sump and getting that combined um, you know, results. Others, I gotta go ahead and test individually, just for peace of mind so I can sleep at night. You see what I'm saying? And it just makes sense when you really think about it you know, in, that, in that way. It just makes sense to test it that way. So hopefully that has helped you out, Brian, and has appeased your curiosity on where to test certain things at. You know, um, like I said, it's gonna be subtle differences. There's gonna be some variation you know, it's gonna be other factors that, you know, that play in its part, the water flow rate, the stocking density that you have, you know, it's gonna be a, a few things that, you know, the type of setup you have, how you have it set up, you know, these are gonna come into play, but overall, that's how I would break it down, and, and you know, I would keep it like that pretty much uh, on a consistent basis. 
So like I said, hopefully that has helped you out, my man, Brian. Any of you guys else, you know, got questions, you got something to yap about, leave them down there in the comment section, you know, and I appreciate you guys asking questions, you know, and um, getting some consultation from me on these things. You know, I love answering you guys' questions. You know, this is what I love doing, aquaponics. So, you know, I wouldn't want to be doing nothing else. You know, and that's the law of the land. So with that being said, this is Brooklyn, St. Michael with the School of Aquaponics, reminding you to stop walking and get you a car. <laughs>